Okay. Um, uh, what do you think about education and uh, art? Is there any connection? Because, for example, if you go to if you go to Italy, they believe that actually art uh, education can destroy uh, art. So, uh, on the highest level, they have the film schools, for example, not the university like Cinecita, because they think that. Uh, uh, if you have a big knowledge of history of art, then this will ruin your authenticity. So, <laughs> what do you believe? Is uh, uh, the profession of uh, is artism more intellectual or intuitive thing? I I think that um, well, personally, I think that the best art education is experiential. I think. By doing art, you learn art. I think art is very difficult to learn in a classroom. I currently teach film and television at a college in Savannah, Georgia called the Savannah College of Art and Design. I run the film department and I have instituted a curriculum there which is what we call hands-on, that we are in, a, in production mode much more than we are in classroom mode. I think any any art education benefits from some background, some historical knowledge, some reference to, if you're a painter, you have to know the great painters. If you are a filmmaker, you have to know the best 300 movies. You have to know these things. It is the language of what you do. But ultimately, the greatest chunk of your learning will come from experience, from doing. I myself, I am not a trained actor. I learned by doing. I started a theater company in Chicago. I got on stage. I was horrible. And I learned how to be good by being horrible over and over and over again until I figured out, well, that was horrible. So now I'm going to change that and now I'm going to be good. Same in film. When I started shooting in front of a camera, I had never been in front of a camera before. So I had to learn that you go from the stage to a very, very small, where you're really just working with your eyes or with your face. So to me, just not only is it my experience, but I think it's the overall general experience. And my students have told me that they really appreciate what's happening now at the school experience over classroom every time. Uh, what do you think about uh, uh, art in the education process? Because, for example, when I was in America, I noticed that each high school has a theater like our opera, for example, and um, that was almost the same in Europe and even in the Eastern Europe, but here we uh, we don't pay so much attention to it, you know, uh, about the Renaissance concept of um, of uh, education, they had uh, go, uh, Golden Five, which included music and uh, theater. What, what do you think? How important is art in the uh, common education process? I think it's very important. Unfortunately, in the United States, art is the first thing to go when their budget cuts. First thing to go, art. First thing. So. As a parent, you have to look for schools that still have art. My daughter, for instance, plays cello and she's, a, she's an artist. We found an arts high school for her in Los Angeles, but, you know, we had to drive an hour each way to get her to the goddamn school. So, you know, it's like, it's what, it's what you have to do. Most Americans, I would say pretty general statement, but I will make it anyway. Most Americans have a horrible arts education. or It's either horrible or non-existent, or it's zero. Yeah. Uh, that is what um, you Americans always say about yourself, but when, when I am speaking to all Americans here, even with the missionaries, they, they have a terrific education. I was so surprised. And everybody else also, compared with us, the your educa art education is uh, on a much higher level. I'm glad to hear that, because in general, the complaint in America is that we need more art. We need more art in the high schools and in the elementary schools, because they're taking it away. 
music, art class, all that stuff, orchestra, taking it away. Uh, what? Uh, we, why? Why did you become? Why did you decide to become an artist? And uh, what tickled you? And usually, uh, parents have uh, some resistance. I yeah. see that you're from a very nice family. Did, yeah. did they? And you? You are very educated. Did they supported you to become an artist? <coughs> As we say, they begrudgingly supported me. I, I think I think my father thought that I would do it for like three or four years and then I would wake up and go back to school, business school or something. Um, so for me, it was really a question of, I was very unhappy. I had finished college, university, very good university. I went to work for a bank in Chicago and I was miserable. I hated it. Hated it. And a friend of mine was taking an acting class. And he said, you should come. It's fun. At least have fun. For one night a week in your life, come have fun. I went to the acting class. I fell in love with it. I thought it was fantastic. And then so from there I met other people. I quit the bank. I started a theater company, I was horrible on stage for a couple of years, and then started to make some money. Great. Yeah. And uh, well, what do you think about uh, ethics in art? How, how much about what? About ethics in art. Eth Eth ethics? Ethics, yes. Uh, for example, uh, now it's very, very, uh, very popular is the, mu the movement Me Too. Yeah. And uh, some two weeks ago I saw the interview with Anna Ventura and she decided to kick out uh, all her friends, even the close friends that she used to go to coffee every day with, like Mario Testino, because they harassed uh, women. Uh, because uh, Mario Testina, undoubtedly, he's a genius, he's a very good uh, photographer. And I saw that uh, you worked, for example, with Kevin Spacey. Yeah. Uh, do you, what do you think, we, uh, shall we work with these uh, people that are involved in some of this? Uh, and this is very common in Macedonia. Here we tolerate, if he's a good artist, we'll tolerate everything. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm... Um... I think, I don't think anyone should ever use his position to hurt other people. But I also live in the real world. And I want to tell you something. When I worked with Kevin Spacey in London at the theater, everybody knew what was going on. Everybody knew what was going on. And it wasn't like he was taking 14-year-old boys up into his apartment. I have a real problem with the... Do you know what I mean when I say the pendulum swings? Yeah. So the pendulum now with the Me Too movement has swung very, very, very far to the right. I don't think what Kevin did was great. Kevin messed up, and Kevin is paying the price for it. But I also think that right now... If I say about you, you did this or that, in public opinion, you're done. It's over. There's no trial, there's no jury, you are convicted, and you are done. And that is dangerous. It is dangerous because anyone can say anything, and all of a sudden you are slandered. You know what I mean by slandered? You are done. And it's dangerous because, look, I think that Harvey Weinstein, even Kevin, they took it too far and they are being punished and that is correct. But I worry that in general, the Me Too movement, the pendulum has swung too far and that people, it's like... Um, we had this whole thing back in the 90s in California, maybe you remember, the, the McMartin preschool trial where these, these preschool teachers were accused of abusing all these children. And their lives were ruined. It later came out that they were innocent. But everyone heard about this and everyone said, oh, you, you did this to the children and you did this and you did that. 
we have to make sure that people are being held accountable, but we have to make sure that we are being fair. Here's the other thing. I'm sorry. This whole thing with, I'm on a date with somebody, and he tries to kiss me, and I didn't want to, and that becomes a crime? Th that to me is like, that's, that's bullshit. Like, of course, but uh, in many cases, even for example in Sweden, which is considered the best, that has the best judiciary system in the world, for example, a woman was raped by uh, Julian Assange and she passed the lie detector, yeah. but uh, uh, she's still waiting and the case is not open because there's a, a sophisticated corruption in the well, court know, and Look, the well, only way to tackle this uh, question is uh, through media. Yeah. Well. Because he, he actually he wasn't a spy and that was the only way he could get away with it to say that he yeah. was prosecuted on political. But crime. here's the only here's the thing. And actually he's a rape. But here's the thing. If we allow the media to become our judiciary system, Not. we're in trouble. And that's I think what's happened. Right now, if I say so and so did this to me on Twitter or on Instagram. Hashtag me too. So and so did this to me. It goes viral, and that person now has to is assumed guilty. The whole thing with the with our jurisprudence system is that it, it, it is the presumption of innocence. Look, I'm going to probably get in trouble for this, but here's the deal: you can't you can't assume people are guilty. You have to prove that they're guilty, and right now, with Me Too, they, there is no process. They are assumed that they're guilty, and that is a problem. That is a problem. I'm sorry, that's a problem. Good. And uh, what do you think about uh, Nizan Sen, you know, the, how you position, uh, uh, for example, in uh, on French language, they have only one uh, word for uh, direction and for... Uh, a set design, which is a mise en scène, and they consider it the position of the object yeah. in the space. Yeah. And uh, there used to be, I think that uh, cinema mise en scène is uh, not uh, developing because the linkage between theater and uh, uh, films is um, is uh, broken. Is uh, is broken, and uh, the best uh, directors uh, that uh, improved the film mise en scène were also active in uh, theater, like. Uh, Orson Welles, um, uh, Max Ophis, uh, Abel uh, uh, Gantz, uh, uh, George Tucker, you uh, worked on Philadelphia, yep. and this was also, I had this movie for exam for uh, film uh, mise-en-scene, and do you think we should uh, go back for, uh, to this connection? So, look. I'm a big fan of Wes Anderson's, and I think Wes Anderson is one of the few film directors that still shoots in a very theatrical way and in, 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 in a way where you really see the development of a mise-en-scene. You know, a lot of American cinema right now is really... Do you know what mumblecore is? You know what, what mumblecore? So these movies that are very intimate and very much shot on iPhones and, and it's really about the acting. It's really more of a... From Cassavetes, it's more of a of, ah, yes, of just yes. very realistic and and not so much about the stage picture. You know, I think that the challenge for a movie, let's say, is you must have the truth in the acting, but very often you don't have a great sense of of a visual style, and so you know most. My film students, most film students, do not have theater backgrounds, do not have great background in visual, and they have to learn that. Some of my best filmmakers are painting students, because they actually do think about... Like David Lynch. Well, exactly. But even you know my students in Savannah, some of the best students that I have are painting students, because they have a greater sense of the scene. Um, uh, what do you know about uh, the Macedonian uh, theater and uh, uh, did you ever see anything or written uh, 
uh, from Macedonian authors, uh, sta uh, uh, plays, or whatever. I know that uh, some of it was uh, staged in Canada, for example, uh, Kola Chasula. But uh, did, do, do you know uh, what did you know about Macedonian theater before you came here? Uh, not much, unfortunately. I mean, I saw Before the Rain, you know, I saw the movie, um, um, and I, when I came here in 2016, I consulted on those two TV shows, um, Therapia and, um, and uh, The Insider. Insider. I, I, so I, I saw the actors, you know, and I, so I was very impressed with the actors. And I'm very impressed with these actors, you know, it's, they're very good actors. So I don't have a lot of historical knowledge of Macedonian theater, but from two years ago, working on those two television shows here, I knew that the actors were good. And because I'm an actor, and, and when I direct my first, the first thing I deal with is the actors, um, I knew that I would have fun here because the actors are good. Yeah, great. Yeah. And uh, what do you think about politics and freedom of expression? And uh, were you ever detained because of the way you were expressing? I didn't find on the internet. And, but was I ever what? Detained, for example. They will keep you, in, for example, in custody in some special oh, no, institute. Oh, no, no, no. Was they ever arrested for... Yes. No. This uh, you have, uh, very commonly happens in uh, Latin America. Unfortunately, it used to happen here a lot. Of, you know that we had a regime yeah. with uh, yeah. Nikola Gruevsky. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. uh, do, you, do you have any solidarities with these uh, our actors and uh, do you show around the world usually? I think that in the past uh, artists uh, used to have a much bigger solidarity for this kind of issue. Well, look, I, you know, I think... Especially like the golden age of Hollywood, you know, yeah. they were all refugees from Eastern Europe. Right, 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 right. I mean, look, I mean... 99% of American actors and people in Los Angeles and in the entertainment industry are very liberal, are very left-leaning, uh, you know, freedom of expression, um, you know, not Trump voters, um, myself included. Um, I think there is, we have a lot of solidarity with freedom of expression. It's just... Um, we've never personally experienced, I've never been arrested, you know, the only time I ever got in trouble was when my theater in Chicago, everybody was naked on stage and the police came and said, you can't do that, you know, that you, you, there's too many, pe too many naked people on stage here. Which play? It was a Richard Foreman play. You know Richard Foreman, the experimental theater director in New York? Uh, yeah, it uh, rings the bell, but now yeah. I cannot remember. Yeah, so anyway, we, we adapted a Richard Foreman play, and we decided for some reason that we should all be naked. And the Chicago Police Department didn't think that was a very good idea. So we had to get half of the cast put their clothes on. Then, then, then they let us continue. It was just, there was... Too many naked people. That was their problem. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, usually, Macedonia and the ex-country uh, of Yugoslavia was very uh, considered to be very liberal for this. For example, in 1969, there was a play, a uh, hair, you know, the music. Sure, 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 sure. And in one scene, they were all naked. Okay, uh, there you go. At, uh, but then they wanted to, with this, another place to go to Italy, and they told them you cannot play. No, 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 no. But uh, usually the uh, Holland and this ex-Yugoslav is considered to be very, very liberal. Good, yeah. good, good, good. Uh, how, Two more minutes, I gotta go. Okay, uh, what do you think about uh, our repertoire here in Macedonia? And you are what? The, 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 the um, performances that are uh, Oh, they're fantastic. The program is. Yeah. Because we were kind of isolated and there used to be much more um, uh, American and English uh, plays in the first half of the 90s and now due to this... Uh, political uh, problems, uh, they were stopped and uh, uh, do you think that, uh, because I think uh, these uh, other countries from Eastern Europe, they ha when they broke up from Eastern Bloc, they insisted on this Western, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, so, sort of aesthetics, uh, clarity and precise, preciseness and uh, do you think we should uh, have uh, more uh, 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 programs like yours, like your... Uh, I think I'm uh, really voting for this. Well, well look, I, I think it's important that each country uh, nurture their own authors and their own talent, but I think that you know, I, I can't speak from a great experience, but look, I think Victoria is doing an amazing job here. She's she's very impressive. We we picked the play together, um, and um, you know, the, the I I am I love my cast. So far, so good. I mean, I'm very very happy with the work experience here right now. As happy as I would be if I were doing this anywhere else in the United States or really anywhere else in the world. Could not be happier with the theater management, could not be happier with the actors, could not be happier. I mean, this is a great work experience for me. Yes, and the last uh, question, uh, the, uh, the first country that ever employed actors and theater pe people was uh, Poland. Do you believe uh, in this, uh, uh, in this uh, system of uh, state-protected artists? Because uh, when we had this, a uh, lot of American directors in the first half of the 90s were coming here, they said, my God, here artists are so uh, privileged and uh, we in America, we don't have uh, anything. This was this uh, wonderful direct. Uh, uh, directress from uh, uh, from Broadway. She staged uh, here uh, long journey into the long day's journey. Yeah, long journey into the night. Long day's journey into night. Yeah, into the, the, the Eugene O'Neill play. Yeah. Yes. So he, here's the, here's the thing. I've always been a fan of German theater, and German theater is the same as here, where you have companies of actors that are always employed. I think it's fantastic. I'm jealous. I wish we had that in America. There's just one little problem. Sometimes when actors or artists have that kind of security, they get lazy and they get and they stop being inspired. So it's kind of a it's it's sort of it's a two you when I say when I say it's a two-edged sword, it's like in America we have no security. We're, we're always freelance. And I think there's something good about that because only the best actors really make a living because they're the ones that get through it. But I think that it's good to have, like as a young actor, to have some security so that you can foster your career. I know a lot of actors that were really good in America and they just couldn't, they couldn't take it. They couldn't take the insecurity. They couldn't take the financial problems, and so they they left. And it makes me sad because they could have been amazing. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you much so much, Igor. Nice to meet you. Yes, I hope to see you soon. Yes, I just uh, may, may I.